Hi guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Um, this is part five of my epic backyard cleanup series, which could go for a long, long time, and this is the reason why. Uh, in part four, I think I was starting at the back lane area and I managed to uh, deconstruct a few mattress bases, uh, cleaned up a bit of an area along the fence, and I felt like I was getting somewhere. And we've recently done a big house clean out locally which is what we do our business is um cleaning up deceased estates um properties sometimes mostly before sale so everything has to go and we process it all try to keep most of it out of landfill so this backyard area that was looking or back lane area that was looking quite neat has now had an influx um you can see here there's an old sort of 80s era color tv um another more modern telly an old clothes drawer an old washing machine there was some 70s retro style lounge chairs um, and just lots of stuff that's come out of the shed when we do a clean up it all has to go and we leave the place spotless and uh, that gets us plenty of work we never have to advertise do a good job and people talk but my series of videos is about processing stuff we aim to keep you know, a good 90% of this sort of stuff out of landfill, uh, as much as we possibly can. And it's a lot different from people cleaning up their own family's estates and getting great big skips in and throwing just about everything out to the, the tip. Um, so this has cluttered up my backyard a bit. And if we just have a look out the gate, I've just pulled up this morning with the final load. So uh, there's some old wheelie bins that I'll actually use in my backyard for storage um, there's some old theatre seats there which we'll sell and we make a pretty good living out of this because we do get stuff that's saleable and you can see on the ute there there's old bikes um, we have just general bits of metal carpet is a bit of a problem I do use some of it but uh, sometimes things do have to go to landfill but as I said we like to aim to reducing the quantity by uh, around about 90% which I think it's got to be good and we can make a living out of it as well we'll just have a bit of a scan around here there's lots of firewood um, just general shed clutter some of the wood will be burnt some of it's quite usable and i'll be stacking any good bits aside that i can use plus also we'll sell some of it and the ute's pretty well loaded up as well um, this place had four sheds and there was actually two houses on the property so we've done lots and lots of trips this is the last one so this video will just look at processing some of the stuff in the yard I might scrap out that old 80s era color telly and show you what's inside that and what we can salvage um, we'll just look at a few other things what to do with old chairs that aren't really saleable um, some really early uh, panelled windows here out of um, possibly circa 1900 house uh, they'll sell quite well I'll clean those up and uh, we'll just look at a few other things in this video so stay tuned all right I've got the trailer almost unloaded and the ute's empty um, and you can see there's old theatre seats they're 1920s possibly a little bit earlier um, nice cast iron ends a little bit rough as far as the upholstery goes but it's the original leather and the pivoting seats so that little gang of seats was a good little find um, we'll probably get a couple hundred dollars for that that's quite good a little bit of timber left in the trailer and if we go back into my yard um, you can see it really is the case here of um, one step forward, two steps back, sometimes trying to clean my yard because we do all these other house and lot, shed lot cleanups. But for the purpose of this video, we'll um, just concentrate on a couple of items. I have got some of my original area back and organised, which is the dryer body is packed with pressing steel, all neatly arranged there on pellets. And the e-waste on top, I've already stripped what value I want out of those, so they'll go to the transfer station. Uh, next trip out there so that's um that's my little system there which works well i've just got to keep this clutter at bay and try and keep processing it 
So we'll start with this vintage TV. It's a 80s era uh, national. Um, it's a colour TV. Um, it is actually a. You can see the the contact or the veneer um, stuffs come off in the sun, and the rain. We had rain the other day, and it's soaking into the chipboard case. So, look, it was no good anyway. These tallies don't have any real value. If you get back to the black and white ones, they're starting to become collectible, and there are certain size. Um, CRT TVs that are sought after by the gamers, retro gamers, particularly if they've got a SCART connector. But there are some size tubes, I think 19 inch from memory, which are really good for um, arcade machines. So look out for those. Anyway, we'll scrap this telly and see what we find inside it. Okay, let's have a look at what's in this old uh, National Colour telly. So we'll pull the cover off. Okay, we'll keep the, um, the screws for the moment because we want to put the cover back on when we're finished. Snip the antenna connection off there. There's a lot of space in here compared to a modern telly. So we don't want to waste too much time. We just want to get what value we can out of here. Uh, we'll take the yoke. We'll take the yoke off. There. Good source of copper in the old yokes. So um, that's worth grabbing for sure. Got to be a bit careful around the picture tube. They're quite delicate at the back and they're a vacuum. So if you knock it, it could um, essentially implode and you'll have glass everywhere, not to mention a bit of an environmental hazard. So we'll just cut these big wires off here to make a bit of clear view. So plenty of good wiring on these old tellies. And we'll take the main board out. A couple of um, little lugs there. Okay, board's fairly simple. Um, into the 80s, there are some IC chips on there, but uh, not a lot of value as far as um, precious metal recovery goes. So this board will go, just go as a, um, a low-grade board, really just for base metal recovery. And we will have to take it off the metal frame because um, there's too much junk on there. But the board itself, with the transformers and everything, will go as uh, low grade. Okay, we have the mains cord, which um, is always good copper in the mains cords. They stack up pretty quick to the weight for the weight. Now we have some wires down behind the control panel. Just lots of snipping. Good wiring loom there. Now the main copper in these old tellies is the degaussing cable around the picture tube. It's quite a thick electrically taped cable and it's certainly worth stripping there we go good weight in that it'll be good copper there the only other thing I'll grab off the picture tube is this um, braided wire which is actually tinned copper bit of tinned copper there. Um, there's not much more we want really. A few bits of wire. 
and the circuit board at the back of the control panel will take that out while we're here. Um, there's really no value on that circuit board. I probably could have left it in there. And the only other thing I will take is the speaker. Quite a handy 8 ohm speaker. Someone used that um, in a project somewhere. Um, probably only get a few dollars for it, maybe even a dollar, but it's much better than scrap value. That's all we want. We'll just put the back cover back on. And that way I can take it to the transfer station as a TV, which um, I can do for free because there is a, a recycling area for e-waste out there. Uh, they don't really need to know that I've got a bit of value out of it first. They still have processes to make sure the pitcher tube, um, which contains some toxic metals, uh, I think lead or mercury, but it will end up in the right place to be recycled environmentally safely. Uh, so I always hold the cover screws over to screw them back in. Don't have to put them all in. And that's it. The TV is still pretty heavy because of the pitcher tube, but it can now go to the transfer station and I've got plenty of value out of it. Okay, I've... Um Processed my e-waste for now. The yard's getting a bit more organised in this back corner. Um, all those tellies and vacuums and printers are off to the transfer station next chance I get. Um, the only other thing I'll address in this video is these couple of chairs. What to do with the old chairs that come out of sheds? Um, they're not really saleable. These are actually pretty good quality teak chairs, but the, um, the upholstery's gone. They're filthy dirty. Um, if you're a home hobbyist uh, upholstery, you'd probably have a go at it, but I'm not going to try and sell these. So rather than chop them up for firewood or throw them out, um, I thought we'll have a quick look at repurposing or at least revamping. So I've taken the screws out of this one, and we have quite a good solid frame still. They're not wonky at all, so I think they're worth using. Uh, now. Depending on the style of chair, um, you could just simply put timber slats. Here's a, a scrap of old board I chopped up just before. Could equally be um, pallet timber. And, you know, that will make a, a pretty cool outdoor seat. Uh, as I said, it's quite stable. The back's a little bit trickier because it's only got the mounting holes up the top and they are on an angle. So... Um, you know, depending on the style of chair, you could still make something that would work there. But looking at the pieces I took off, they're actually solid ply. So it's probably worth taking the old material off and just reusing the ply. And here we go. It looks better already. Um, the beauty of using the existing ply is that you don't have to drill new holes. It's just a matter of screwing it back on. Um, it's molded obviously to suit the shape of the frame and that looks pretty cool in, on its own but it is a bit rough uh, and without the padding um, the screws from underneath actually do stick through which obviously isn't ideal comfort wise uh, and there's the green is the remains of some sort of glue that held the foam padding but um, the ply is pretty good they were wet once or twice and it has it has started to lift a little bit but they're still very solid so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint those pieces of ply and leave the frame as a nice teak and they'll actually be much classier chairs than I initially envisaged so we'll hop to that shortly and see what the finished product looks like and here we go all done um, I didn't go to too much trouble at all I really just slapped some paint on I found an old can of paint it was half full in the shed that I was cleaning out I went for an enamel because it's um, 
it's going to seal the ply and pretty well make it waterproof. Uh, not that you'd leave these chairs out in the weather all the time, but now they're quite suitable um, chairs for the veranda or the under the pergola where they, they get a little bit of shower or rain, it won't hurt. I didn't go to any trouble at all. Um, I just slapped the paint on. You can see the paint's got um, little lumps in it and I didn't sand other than the quick sand initially to get the glue off. I didn't fill any holes, I just left it as it was. Um, but they're quite sturdy, stable outdoor chairs now. Um, they kind of look cute, a little bit rustic. And um, that's turned something that was going to be rubbish in other people's eyes into something that I could probably sell them. I'm not going to get much, maybe 20 bucks a pair. Uh, and normally I probably wouldn't go to this trouble just to make 20 bucks. But the whole point here is, you know, you can turn rubbish into something still usable with a little bit of effort this cost me nothing as i said the paint was uh, what i found in the shed anyway the brush was an old brush in the shed so i've just been reusing what i found and there we go a couple of nice retro revamped outdoor chairs so thanks for watching this video we'll um, get back to the yard clean hopefully i'll start making progress soon we have caught up on our last few deals but uh, knowing my line of work, I'll probably get a whole house to clean out tomorrow. So keep tuned and uh, you should see something interesting.